So if we think of every psychological trait imaginable, like if we think of things like obviously cognitive ability, you could have personality, but even life outcomes like divorce rate or maybe like likelihood of criminal behavior, all of those things are under significant genetic influence. If you take something like height, it might be 80% heritable and then divorce rate also seems to be 40% heritable and, heritable. and people could say like, how is it possible that divorce rate could be half as heritable as height? For some people that would be unbelievable. So do you want to just talk a little bit about how almost everything, every outcome is not necessarily fully determined by genetics, but it's under a lot of genetic influence. People say, well, how can divorce be heritable? Divorce, you know, either happens to you or it doesn't. But then stop and think about it. And that's what I'd like listeners to always do. Stop and say, what about genetics? So think about who gets divorced and who doesn't get divorced. Can't you think of anything there that might be genetic? It isn't like the act of going to court and getting a divorce certificate. What kind of people and I know because it's me, I've been divorced twice. And, you know, I think you can easily think of things like, um, and, and a weird thing no one has talked about is I think some of the things that make you at risk for getting divorced might be some of the things that make you attractive in the first place. You know, like kind of being a free spirit, risk taking, you know, um, joie de vivre, you know, and everyone knows after a certain amount of time, some of that wears off and more mature people might just roll with it and say, well, that's getting mature and getting older. But other people just say, well, life is short and I want more fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that's well put. So 